That's the principle of going. Go, go. In Jesus' name, say amen. amen. Oh, hallelujah. When I arrived in Lesotho, I told you already, people weren't interested in my preaching. I had to unlearn what I had learned before. And the Holy Spirit began to teach me completely fresh and new. It was the hard way, but it was a blessed way. All of a sudden I realized the way I was coined and I had been taught was the way God couldn't use me. So by His grace, He reeled it all back and pushed record and started afresh. Hallelujah! I started a Bible correspondence course in Lesotho. And to my surprise, 50,000 enrolled. Oh, when, when that happened, it was as if I had just emerged with the submarine. And through the periscope, I could see what happened on the surface of the ocean. And I saw it was filled with drowning people desperately wanting to get saved. I kind of woke up. Humanity is salvation willing. They are desperate. They want to get saved. And here I sit with my little wrong ideas. I said, oh Lord, help me to move to the drumbeat of the Holy Spirit. And he began to do that. I have now this big job on hand with those 50,000 students. I designed the course myself, of course, with only one thing in object, one object in mind. I wanted, to, I wanted them to get saved. Because they were not saved. So it worked very well. I had to rent offices. One day I had to pay the rent. It was only $50 per month. But $50 is a lot if you haven't got one in your pocket. And the whole day I felt the pressure. At, at 5 o'clock p.m. I had to pay the rent. Oh Lord. Well, $50 was a lot. Because there was nobody I knew that could give me $50 anyway in that area. But God answers prayer. Five o'clock came. But the money hadn't come. And I left the office just to walk to the house where we as a family lived. My wife and our three children. And as I was walking on the road home, on a public road, lots of people crossing. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, Holy Spirit just whoo, came on me. And I heard a little voice say in my heart, Do you want me to give you one million dollars? What a temptation! A million dollars. For moments it shot through my mind what I couldn't do for Jesus with one million dollars. One million dollars, I said to myself, I could bombard the whole world with the gospel. Today I know better. All of a sudden a second thought crossed my mind. And I'm not a weepy person at all. I'm a tough German. I stood there on that public road. Tears gushing out of my eyes. People passing me left and right. I had forgotten this world. I threw up my arms and I cried. 
No, Lord. I'm not asking for one million dollars. I'm asking for one million souls. I said, Lord, one million souls less in hell and one million souls more in heaven. That shall be the purpose of my life and ministry. One million souls. In a moment, the Holy Spirit spoke words to me I had never heard or read before. And these words have become the motto of my life. He said, you will plunder hell and populate heaven for Calvary's sake. <laughs> hallelujah! Oh, hallelujah! Blessed be the name of Jesus. I just grabbed it. I said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I left Lesotho. I said, where do I start? I moved from Lesotho to South Africa, Johannesburg, right next to the big airport in Johannesburg. Five car minutes away from the home I had there now. I remember when all, the, when all our little belongings in the boxes were dropped at the roadside there and I sat on one, I felt like a speck of dust floating in the universe. I said, Lord, I heard you say Africa shall be saved. I don't know how, I haven't got the clue, but here I am. I'm all by myself. I've got nobody. I have no team. I've got nothing. Here I sit on this box at the roadside. For four weeks, I didn't hear the voice of God. And I felt ill. I went to a doctor. He said to me, you've got stomach ulcers. I said, what? And then God spoke to me. In the morning, I woke up without stomach ulcers, and I haven't had them since. And I went to the little town of, capital of Gaborone, of, of Botswana, called Gaborones. I went there for another matter. A local pastor expected my coming, and I arrived there. When I arrived there, I, I had to walk from the airport to town because I didn't have the money for the cab. And as I was walking, suddenly the Holy Spirit, he seems to find me on the road, <laughs> came upon me and he said, can you see over there? I said, yes, Lord. It says there, National Stadium. And the Lord said to me, I want you to preach my word there. Wow! I said, Lord, I always had wanted to preach in a stadium, but the people never came. But if you say, I'm to preach in the stadium, I will preach in the stadium! I met the local pastor. After greeting, I said, I want you to go with me to the authorities. I want to rent the national stadium today in four weeks. My crusade is starting, the first one. I saw his chin drop. He said to me, what? National stadium? What do you want the national stadium for? Don't you know that I've got 40 people in my church? I said, no, I don't know about your 40 people, but I know a few minutes ago, I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit. I tell you this on purpose, because I believe this is how God will deal with you as well. He was humble enough to go with me to the authorities. And when I put my signature under the contract for the stadium, I started to perspire. I said, how am I going to fill that stadium? Somehow my mind played tricks on me. I already saw me in the national stadium with, sitting with 40 people. <laughs> know how our minds are? 
conjuring up pictures. I, I, I quickly added a few days to my visit in Gaborones. I went from church to church. I said, I'm Reinhard Bonnke. In four weeks' time, uh, we have a great crusade here in the National Stadium. Would you please be so kind to cooperate? Everyone said no. But everybody also said, who are you? I said, I'm Mr. Nobody, but God spoke to me. They said, anyone can say that. I said, I agree, but he really spoke to me. And when they all said no, when they all said no, I woke up. I said, Lord, 